Uh, welcome back to Online Darts, everyone. We're here in between sessions in Frankfurt, and we've got Daza. Glenn, first of all, how much are you enjoying this whole experience that you're now on in a, in a different capacity? Yeah, it's funny because I think you interviewed me once when I just come onto the scene in 2019 yeah. in an arena like this at the Euro Tour. Yeah, it's, it, you know, my life is totally different these days, and but I still get that love and that passion for darts uh, that the commentary's given me, and just as nervous, you know, each game that we've had today. You do your preparation and whatever, so um, yeah, still involved heavily. Got my PDPA stuff as well going, so a lot's going on, but I'm in a good place. What was it like when you got the call from Sky to, to come and give it a, a, a go? Uh, and, and honestly, I'll, I'll tell you the story. I went to do a, uh, a podcast and uh, I was stuck in traffic all the way down there, London traffic at the, at the back end, came out. So it was a 10, 11 hour journey for a 20 minute podcast and I moaned, I complained, I whinged. And then the next day I got a message to say, would you be interested in sort of a bit of a screen test at the uh, Grand Slam of Darts? Uh, and I guess the rest is history. Um, you know, Ali Pali was an excellent experience. Uh, and I feel like doing the Modus Super Series, thank God I did that because I made so many mistakes early doors at Modus and I'm just beginning to create my style. Uh, you know, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's good, but yeah, working for Sky does have that huge yeah. World Cup itself, obviously, we don't know who wins it at the, at the time of recording, but a lot's been made around the England team, just just in general. But this England team looks the business right now, doesn't it? Whether they go on and win it or, or, or not, it's the first time since the golden days of, of yeah. Phil and Adrian that we can say, hang on a minute, this is a proper England team. Yeah, it's off the hockey as well. That's impressed me more than anything. They look comfortable with each other. Uh, they totally believe in each other's abilities. Uh, Michael Smith thrown first because of his experience, so there's a strategy as well there. And like you said, they just look really good, and there's still questions to be answered, uh, even going into the quarterfinals today, but look, we're minutes away from them just being brilliant today. So whether that happens against Scotland and then potentially a Belgium final as well, I guess, uh, yeah, it, it, yeah, I've been very, very impressed. Well, two things off the back of what you just said there. One, the plan, are you surprised that Scotland, look, they've got a plan, but are you surprised that Gary yeah. isn't yeah. throwing first? Because I'm guessing you want your best player to have as many goes as possible. There's a statistic out, Phil, where if you're throwing second, then 75% of legs, you will have a dart at the double. So I don't know if, because it seems strange, because Michael Smith going ahead of Luke Humphrey is the world number one, world champion, etc. Um, but, you, you know, is there that decision that you'll be your best finisher? is actually going to throw a second or do you have your ability that we're just going to smash 12 darters in every time and don't. so I think there's a little bit of strategy in it as well. What have you made to the Belgium dynamic because they're obviously putting on this front for the cameras we saw the interviews that Dimitri gave in the build-up to, to the World Cup and he was quite adamant of, of his feelings but look they are being professional they're putting on this this front but how long can that front last when there is genuine dislike between them? Just for the World Cup and honestly, and, it, and it's so true, you know, they are not mates. I've just been in a practice room there, one turn left, one turn right. You know, it was high fives, fist pumps, be interviewed by you guys, and then they went their separate way. So it's not part of this plan, oh, let's pretend we don't get on. You know, they're never going to be best mates, and uh, it's a shame. You know, they've known each other a long time, but, you know, I've been involved when I was a number one against a number two, and the, who's the best in this area. And, you know, when people follow, I'm, I know Dimmy well. And if he gets something in his mind, or if so, I think if you cross him, there's no going back. I think it's that type of mentality. And uh, like you say, so headstrong. And you know, we saw that dart that took forever today on double 10 and whatever. So, you know, love him or love him, he is dimmy, he's different. But that dynamic between the two of them is real. We're on the stage, the chemistry is first class. You talk about the dynamic, and, we, and we, I agree, we, we've seen it, that it is literally something but they are just doing... But when you're in the trenches, when you really need it, say they get to the final and it's a last leg decider and your mate's just missed four match starts and you bail them out, can that trust be there when you when you don't get on? Do, do you know what I mean? Like you say the England team, it's there. When they, these two are really in the trenches, can it be there? Yeah, it's a good question because everything's gone really positive uh, until today. And like I said, there's that dynamic where they're playing their two best mates as well, Mensah and Rauby. So, you know, 
Kim's the best mate of them two as well. It, it is a, it's a good question. Uh, I just feel that when they get on that stage, they put everything aside. The narrative uh, going into it was professionalism. They've remained professional throughout, and let's see what happens when it comes to there. But listen, you know, it's real. What you know, it's real between them. You know, they dislike, they don't like each other. It's as simple as that. But up there, they're doing the business. The Premier League. I remember speaking to you at, at Ali Pali, and you were crying for Luke Littler to be in. This was even before he, he, he went on and, and got, got to the final. He goes on and, and wins it. What a, what a story. And what did you make of the way he approached the Premier League? Because you've been in it, it, it it's tough. Yeah, I'm going to go back to uh, back to Ali Pali when he played Matt Campbell. So he'd had this magnificent average in the first round. Things weren't going as planned against Matt Campbell. His family and friends looked a little bit frenzied. And he looked over and he went, calm down and I thought at 16 year old that is unbelievable um, we went to O2 at the end the first time we've ever had a sellout at O2 people are coming up to me saying he's a decent player he? that 16 17 year old lad he's changed the whole dynamics of it he had to be in the Premier League that's one thing but then to go on and win it I didn't really expect that he's he's just generational he is the X factor and he's getting that balance right as well, where he's not playing every tournament, he's not going to be burnt out. Listen, uh, yeah, he's been fantastic for the game. Obviously, I know you've been involved with him through, through Target and, and everything like that. Where is his ceiling? Because everyone says that Phil's records will yeah. not get beaten. Yeah. Will he play no. long enough no. to get near them? No. no, I don't think he is, because you know when Phil was doing it, Phil was earning... 10 grand and whatever I mean he's going to be a multi-millionaire you know you, you sort of see an element of it with Michael Van Gerwen and that appetite how on earth does Michael keep going he's got everything he's ever wanted still walking away from his young family when he when he goes away there I don't think he'll have the longevity Luke Littler uh, it could be a decade of brilliance you know it, it could it could go away two years time when he hasn't really had a serious knock yet you know a little dent in the confidence just enjoy him while he's here right now, producing staggering things. Those nine darters, the Premier League wins, it's just, yeah, he's just rejuvenated, revitalised our game right now. And the front pages and back pages are all about darts again. That's got to be seen as a positive. Well, you touched on, on Michael there about the appetite. Are you, are you concerned that that appetite isn't there? Obviously, as a player, you might not see it, but now you're doing the punditry and analysing everything. There was a really good quote from Richard Ashton recently that he says, he doesn't smile anymore. No. Are, are you seeing perhaps that enjoyment from Michael isn't there anymore? Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, I've got no evidence of that. I, and I've yeah. never I've never been close to Michael. Yeah, yeah. Um, he saw me as a threat when I was a player and doesn't give in. And that's, I, I, I like that. He's not in it to be everyone's best mate. Um, he's not playing as well. Who knows how much he's practising? I mean, it, Vincent van der Voort, is he playing a part in sort of like getting him back on the practice board, etc. But honestly, travelling here for four days this week, I'm already thinking of going home tomorrow. When you're the dark player, when you're at the top, you've got exhibitions, you've got tournaments. I mean, we haven't even come to the busy part of the season yet. How does he keep on going? How much appetite has he got to continue playing? I totally understand it. Do I think he's going to get and dominate again? No, I don't. Touched on your role with the, the PDPA, how have you found it stepping in to that role? I, I won't lie, year one is about just learning, reading policies, reading procedures, just, you know, just being in, involved in meetings, so I'm not heavily involved, but I, I believe I'm still relevant, I still believe if a, a Nathan Aspinall had an issue, he, he, he would come to see me, because, and I want to use that, I, I believe I've been at the top of the world, I've been right on the underneath the gutter, underneath the underbelly of a snake, you know, so I think any question any player has, I feel like I could help them, I feel I'm a good mentor, I feel I'm, you know, I'm a good listener, uh, and if people have issues, I hope one day I can get my teeth into one or two cases, yeah. Do you feel that is important? Because I remember going back that there was always this disconnect between the PDPA and the players. You'd always hear moaning from yeah. the players that the PDOP didn't do enough yeah. for them. And is that something that you're hoping that you can bridge that gap to get players back on side? And I moaned as well. You know, when, when you're winning 275 grand for a Premier League and having to give two or three percent, I can't remember. You know, I moaned. You know, what are they doing for me? All I've ever had is this. What I will say on camera now, right now, is the PDPA are working an awful lot. You know, Alan Warren is 
I've been so impressed at what he's doing in on chatting with Peter and Jamie and chat, uh, you know the numbers that Andy Scott we, we, we're in this uh, group and uh, you know I've got a new feeling about the PDPA now that they are working the socks off behind the scenes and we are there for the players is the message I would say to anyone if you've got any issue no big or small then please get in touch with the PDPA and if there's any support any mechanisms if we can facilitate an answer for you uh, you know then then, then do that but I, I understand that distance and I hear a million times doesn't matter what we say to the PDPA PDC will make the decisions anyway. I get all that, um, but yes, I'm here to try. If I can change something, I will. You touched on it there, and I know you said, do you think it'll ever get to the point where the PDPA will have more influence? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, the PDC is just to make the right decisions. I haven't got too many gripes about how, you know the what what the, what decisions they make. I, I have opinions. Um, but I have an individual opinion, then I'll have a PDPA because we talk, we chat, yeah, we, you know, we look at things, we reason. You know, but for me, it's about support and uh, you know, th th there's lots going on and I want to get my teeth into certain things. I, I love coaching, I want, to see, I want to see coaching badges, I want, I want to see a dark player who finishes their career and there's a pathway for them in other avenues, whether it be commentary, whether it be coaching, whether it be you know, so many things. So, you know, I have ideas, but I won't lie. I was, I'm not going to dive into the PDPA no, no. and say I want to do. I want this to happen, that yeah, to of happen. Course. You know, I'm listening, I'm reading, I'm understanding. Match play is coming up. I know it was one of your favourite tournaments, yeah. and I remember it was probably your real breakthrough tournament oh, yeah. in, in, in the PDC. And that love affair that you have a bit, they were singing, walking in a dozen wonderland. Are you excited to go back in this capacity to the Winter Gardens? Yeah, it's the best week of my life. I can't think. I, I had a cracking week at Lakeside. You know, the the, uh, the first one. I did love going to Lakeside, the timing, see, you know, the, a bit like the crucible at Sheffield when you drove and seeing that you're in Frimley Green. But that week in Blackpool, a different audience, this BDO player coming over and da da da. I answered so many questions there. So I'm looking forward to going to Blackpool immensely. And uh, it is the most iconic venue. And I think we've got the best 32 players ever now. I think the field's going to be stunning. I uh, can't wait to see the final Pro Tour as well. You know, James Wade, 50 quid behind Kevin Dutch right now. So there's so much excitement is still to come, and yeah, I can't wait. Going in to that last race before a calf, does the atmosphere change at, at a Pro Tour because everyone knows I'm safe, I'm safe, but the ones that are, that are sweating just yeah. in or, or just out, does it change? Yeah, I think so. Like I said, it's it's exciting for the bit, but. but when you, when you get involved in battle, if I'm playing James Wade and I know that if he beats me here, he's still... In the heat of battle, you're not thinking like that. And, you know, people like James Wade won't be... If you, if you do start thinking on the hockey, which I've said a million times, you, you're goosed. Uh, so you've just got to try and remain as cool, as calm, uh, as much as possible and let the outcomes look after themselves. You know, someone will say, well, I've put myself in this position anyway, where someone like Kevin Dutz is on that upwards trajectory right now and does he deserve to go? Exciting. If you're one of the seeds and you're waiting for this Ooh, draw, yeah. there is four or five yeah. absolute horror draws. Well, there's one horror draw right now and four that were playing out, you know, Josh Rock today. That's right, he, he's one of them. You, uh, you look at it, you've obviously got Luke Littler, yeah. Gary Anderson, Gary Anderson. Josh, Josh Rock, yeah. uh, Richie Edhouse is playing, yeah. so Martin Schindler. Yeah. Um, there's going to be a, probably five seeds, that are, or all the 16 are going to be going, yeah. please not me, aren't they? Yeah. Well, Schindler is a good one, but I, I still think he plays his best in Germany. Uh, so I'm waiting for that real massive, but I've been so impressed with him. I used to call him a bit of a bottle job. When I used to stand behind him, I thought he won't hit this. I remember him battering me once at the Grand Slam of Darts, and it was a bit like how Scotland beat Sweden today. <laughs> How I won that game, and I was like, and, and Martin Schindler right now, I think, is one of the best five players. He just looks so good about himself. So, yeah, it's a great shout, but for me, it's all about which seed's going to draw a little. I know, obviously, he's broken the, the mould, but, and I understand you can't change it for one player, but the fact he is in that non seed draw when mm. clearly he should be on the other yeah. side, but I know, I know that takes time. Yeah. That the fact that we could have a repeat of the world final in round one of the yeah. match play, it's like, is that... Yeah, what, what I would say to you is, uh, going back to the PDPA answer then, if you can think of something different, i.e. a one-year rolling table, someone who would listen and, and, yeah. and, look, and, and then facilitate them, you know, speak to people, I don't think there's an awful lot wrong. There's, there's no, no, some, I agree, he's broken the mould. And, and I remember, look, in my last year, I couldn't... 
I couldn't buy a game. And he's me at the World Match Play, driving to Blackpool, knowing I can't beat Callan Rids. He's me going to Ali Pali, knowing I can't beat Willie O'Connor. There's nothing to suggest in my practice how on earth I can go, but them two matches were worth 25 grand. So there is flaws in it. You know what I mean? There's the, the, the certain things, but it's a good example of something like that is how do we correct that then? What do you recommend? What do you, you know, what do we do? It's interesting that, that, that your take on that. And it's nice to, to know that someone, not just you, but in general, that, that is being thought of, which is good, because one that comes up quite a lot is the Adrian Lewis mm. tour card situation. And I, I fully appreciate it. it's Adrian's card. Yeah. He can do it what he wants, but it's a waste. That card could be being yeah. used when, I understand he wanted the break last year, but there's no signs of it coming back, so it's a waste of a card. Yeah, and there's nothing free. coming out to suggest he's going to the World Championship qualifiers, anything no. like that. So, yeah, I, I get that. I get that. But, um, you know, we had the issue with Christian Perry, we had the issue with Corey Cadby. Yeah. You know, the, the, there's so many things. It, the, you know, the, the, it's not perfect, the system right now. Uh, and if there's, you know, what I would say to the players or, you know, who are watching this, if you can think of something better, then please, Glenn at pdpa.co.uk. Yeah. I would love to help, love to facilitate, love to move that on and see what we can do. We know you follow darts away from the PDC as well, and the amateur game yeah. is really flourishing right now with the, the ADC and, and the Moda Super Series, mm. and especially in the UK, yeah. at the forefront yeah. of, of the change. I know you played within the BDO system for a long time. This must be exciting for these players away from the yeah. PDC right now. Yeah, it is. There's so many opportunities. It's even getting to a stage where, where people aren't going to Q school that I know because they fancy a run on the ADC to then get to Motor Super Series. That's unheard of. You know, there's, it's various pathways. You would never think I'm going to do the BDO cigar rather than the PD. But this ADC, and I've just I've seen some photos of the setup. Is it Aylesbury? It's like this yeah, yeah. One. And the setup was. An amateur competition, but done in a professional way, and I think that's the vision that they have. Uh, yeah, it just seems to be growing and growing. We've got the ADC Europe, ADC Oceanic, and yeah, it's getting bigger and bigger. Interesting what you said there, and it, uh, this is you with one head on and another. I agree with you that if you're a lower end tour card holder, I think there are better opportunities yeah. a a away from it. Mm. And are we getting to the point now where if a player handed back his tour card and said, I can earn more money away from the PDC circuit, is that kind of the wrong message to send out for the professional game? Because I genuinely believe it's getting close to that point where someone will turn their tour card in because they can earn more money away from the PDC circuit. Barring the Willie O'Connor, I think I, I think I earned £2,000. I couldn't live off that, could I? Uh, I really, you know, I like the thought of if you lost the opening game, at least get minimum wage. Um, but the PDC come out, if, you, if you're good enough, you'll make a living there. So yeah, I've got my own personal feelings, you know, you know. that. So there's certain things I might not agree with the PDPA, with the PDC myself. Um, but like I said, they don't often get things wrong in the PDC. And they, they do listen. They do change things, and like I said, if we can, the European Tour was another one. Uh, you know, my argument to that is now to qualify for the European Tour is easier now because you haven't got them big names that you're going to draw there. So, but there's less names going through there. So, you know, we listen, and then we, you know, the, but my, my bottom line is there the PDC don't often make too many wrong decisions. Again, you're throwing out a lot of good ones here, which are making me think. So, would it be a bad? Would it be bad for the professional game if someone thinks they can earn more money from an amateur circuit? Is that a bad look? Point number one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, there's oh, there's, there's pathways out there. But if you if you believe in your ability, then really the PDC is the only place to go. I mean, I had the most incredible two or three years on there. And if you think you're good enough, then that is the only route to go. But there's players there who must openly admit to themselves that. I ain't going to beat Luke Humphreys, I ain't going to beat so and so. I'm only going to. Let's look at someone like who dominated at the North East, someone like a, a Gray Musher, a Rob Grundy. They were dominating uh, the, the, you know, the locally, going on to Mordis, winning good money. Maybe the question could be asked to them, you know, is that, have you enjoyed uh, your time at the PDC? Are you earning more money from there? Do you, if you, and when they ever lose their card, what will their decision be after that? So, 
you know, I'd love to hear from a, a, a Graham Usher in that case because there is amateur players out there who can go and win 25 grand at the Moda Super Series. Well, that's what I mean. Not everyone can get. There's not. Not everyone can get in the top 32. There just isn't room. So people are going to drift off. And judging by what you said there, this is obviously. I'm asking Glenn mm. Durrant here, the former yeah. dark player. Would you like to see, or do you think there should be some monetary value before losing in the opening yeah. round of the Pro Tour? Because you've earned the right, you've won that tour card. And again, we're not talking mega money, even if it's 200 quid for losing to cover expenses. Should you get paid for going to work? If it went to a vote now and they said, Glenn, can we end your vote? I would say, yes, I think uh, a minimum wage of £250 if you lose at the Pro Tour would be my putting there in the hat. That's what I. That's what I would do. But like I said, um, you know the PD, the PDPA will listen to all players. That everyone won't agree with that. If you go and ask Gerwin Price, he was like, no, 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 more money, please, in the top eight. Because you know, but you, you get the fear then that the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. You don't want to have that. You know, if you're in the top 32, you're living a great life. Anything after that, it's it's tough. I had the worst year of my life, just going out there and getting battered. And listen, if I didn't have savings from you know previous success had it been you know going back to work and that so like i said i'll go back to it the pdc do listen yeah, number one because you know there's questions the pdc do it they'll just do whatever they want yes they do the pdp are nothing well what we do is we help we you know we've, we'll put it to the pdc our you know our members are coming to us and saying this is what they like and like i say and then i go back is they'll make the right decision looking forward to the rest of the year it's really exciting. Do you see these majors being shared around for the for the back end of the year? There's no domination now, and I don't think someone as good as Luke Little will dominate now. I don't think Luke Little will win the match play. You know, as good as he is right now, it's it's one of those. He'll have to if he draws one of the real top notch players. I think well, it proves everyone wrong. So he'll probably prove me wrong again. But it took me a while on that stage to just appreciate. Wow, I'm playing at the match play. Um, but yeah, it's just a really exciting time for darts. And look, it's, it's just getting bigger and bigger, isn't it? And uh, gone are the days of domination. Luke Humphreys, he has an incredible time. World number one, world champion. But has his success been overshadowed mm, possibly. by the Luke Little story, do you feel? And ask him, is it a bad thing? You know, he's, he's a very family oriented man. Does he want to be dragged around in medias and everything you do is highlighted like it is for Luke? Um, it, or does he just like the fact that, yeah, self satisfaction, I'm the world champion, I'm the world number one. Maybe I'm not going, you know, maybe I'm not getting all the headlines everywhere, it's down to Luke. So it might be a question for, for, for Luke Humphreys, but if it was Glenn Durrant in Luke Humphreys, I'd say, please leave him, just let me go to the shops and let me have a normal life yeah. and leave all the other bits and. Every time that Luke Little goes to the shop, it's Luke shops at Little and not Marks and Spencers. You know, it can be ridiculous at times. And the read it, social media is one hell of a brutal place. And uh, I think uh, the balance that Luke Humphreys has right now is something he'd be very happy with. It's an absolute pleasure catching up with you here in Frankfurt, mate. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much.